That's Very exciting. Expensive. It's been a whirlwind. Yeah, yeah. So you mentioned your next book. First of all, what is that book about? Um, well, I signed a contract with Simon & Schuster for my next two books, which oh, boy. is so exciting and bizarre because I, I had a, a finished book with Still Alice for so long I couldn't get anyone to buy for a dollar. <laughs> and now I have two books I haven't written yet that are under contract. Um, but the next book is called Left Neglected. And it's about a woman in her late 30s who I think is like so many women I know today. She's multitasking from the moment she wakes up to the moment her head hits the pillow, trying to be everything to everyone, but really never being a whole lot to anything. She's got a high-powered corporate job. So does her husband. She has three young kids. She lives in an affluent suburb of Boston and is desperately trying to keep up with the Joneses. Um, there's really no room in her day for a mistake, and then she makes one. On the way to work one day, she's on her cell phone trying to make a, a call into work, and she takes her eyes off the road for a second too long, gets in a car crash, and sustains a traumatic brain injury. And the condition she has as a result of this is something called left side neglect. And it's a condition in which your brain no longer understands the concept of left. You no longer pay attention to anything on the left side of anything. So she'll only eat food from the right side of her plate and think she's eaten everything. She'll only dress the right side of her body and think she's completed the task. So it's this very strange condition. I've met a bunch of people who have this now and talked to them about what it's like to have this and what it's like to recover and, and adapt with this. So you can recover and heal from this and you can, and make, you can make adaptations to live with this quite well. Um, so the main character in this story at first is determined to get her life back exactly the way it was. Um, but through her journey, she's going to come to want to find something a little simpler and deeper and, and more paid attention to. No, when you first told me about the subject matter of that book, I thought, is that a real condition? And I was surprised to find out it was. Yeah, yeah. Most people have not. So unlike Alzheimer's, which everyone is aware of to some extent, very few people have heard of this condition. So again, I like that I get to bring in my neuroscience background. Um, I've contacted so many people in the medical community, you know, including the patients. I've, I've talked to occupational therapists and physical therapists and the doctors, and I've gone to Spalding Rehab in Boston. And so I get that insider's view into what this world is like. But unlike Alzheimer's, most people have never heard of this. So it's going to be a very, I hope, fascinating condition to sort of watch this character walk through. Well, it sounds like you're going to be an advocate for um, making people aware of this because you'll have quite a platform by the time that book comes out. People will be waiting for it. How far along are you in writing it? Um, I'm about 125 pages, um, and I'm on a schedule. I've got a deadline, ah, <laughs> which is such a different process than still Alice right. and no one watching. Exactly. I mean, what is the difference in writing? Because it's still Alice, there's no deadline, and you didn't know if anyone would ever want it. It's completely right. 180 degrees opposite. I know. It's, you know, it's such a double-edged sword, and, and I'm not complaining for a second. But with Still Alice, the, it was kind of a romantic time to be able to write that and, and be so passionate about writing something that had no expectation. Um, I hoped that it would get published someday, but I, I didn't have, I didn't have anyone watching or there were no expectations of it. Mm -hmm. um, with this, there's, there's a, an interesting psychology that goes with writing a second book that follows such a big hit. Have, I'm still a new writer, so I'm still learning. And, um, and I, it's more regimented and I have to make sure that I get it in on time. So I think the time pressure is what I feel the most. Right. Now, do you have a third book in mind for even the subject of it, or is that way to, way to be seen? Yeah, I do. Um, I, I, interestingly, when we were negotiating the contract and both Simon and & Schuster and my agent thought it would be a good idea to do a, a two-book deal, I kept raising my hand going, I don't know what the third <laughs> book of this two-book deal is going to be. Um, my third book, the, the second book of the two-book deal. And that didn't seem to bother them, but it was really concerning to me. Um, and I, I spent some time sort of meditating and thinking about what that next book would be. And I, and I actually I came up with it, and I do know. And I am very excited to get started on, on that. And I'm looking forward to the day when Left Neglected is done, and I can launch into that. Um, right now it's, it's entitled Love, Anthony. 
and it's about two women and the spirit of an autistic boy. Mm. And I think that's all I'll reveal about it for now. Well, well yeah, that yeah. sounds like it would strike a nerve with many, many people in, throughout the country here and the world. Because autism is so prevalent and getting so much publicity now. So you have your work cut out for you, but it's all good work. It's all good. Thank you, Phil. Well, this is terrific. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed catching up with you again and hearing all Thank the exciting you. news. I'm really happy for you. Thank you so much, Phil. It's great talking to you. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.